Hey everyone. So in this video, I'd like to go over uh, an interpretation of the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. And, and so, you know, here the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus says that if we have a continuous function, the, the definite integral from a to b of that function is just, uh, just comes from evaluating uh, any antiderivative of that function at b, at a, and then taking the difference here. Right, and so, uh, and then again, just to reiterate, you know, this antiderivative can be any antiderivative, and so oftentimes, just for the sake of simplicity, we'll choose the, the antiderivative with a constant of zero being tacked on. Okay, uh, and one last thing before we continue is, is you know, we can interpret this last statement here um, as saying that that uh, f capital F prime of x is equal to lowercase f of x, right? If, if capital F is an antiderivative of f, what that means is that when I take the derivative of it, I should get lowercase f, right? So this is another way of, of stating that capital F is an antiderivative. Okay, so uh, if we use this, this statement I've written in pink to, to reformulate the, the fundamental theorem of calculus, and it's not really gonna look all that different, but but it would look like this, right? We can rewrite. Or at least the, the sort of uh, main point of the fundamental theorem of calculus, part two, is, is that the integral from a to b of lowercase f of x, but, but we're saying lowercase f of x is the same as f prime of x, capital F prime of x. Well, that just boils down to uh, evaluating that antiderivative at, at b and taking away evaluating that antiderivative at a. And so this is really just a change in perspective. I'm not really saying anything new here, but, but what I do want to say uh, is, that, is that really, um, so, so this derivative, and whenever we think derivatives, we should think, rate of change, right? So here we're saying that when we take the integral of a rate of change, um, well, it just amounts to finding the difference of uh, this, this, this antiderivative, this original function, um, really this amounts to finding a net change. Right, so if we have some function capital F and we take the integral of its, you know, the, the rate of change of capital F, well, it just amounts to finding uh, some sort of net change in capital F. And so this is called the net change theorem. And so I'll talk more about what I mean by, by net change in a moment, but, but here uh, the net change theorem is really just another way of saying the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. So it says that uh, the integral of a rate of change is, uh, is the net change. All right, so here, uh, when I say net change, uh, I just mean a, a, a nice difference, and when I say rate of change, um, we're talking about a derivative. Okay, so let's do an explicit example just to pin this idea down. Um, and then, you know, we're not really going to dig into this too much, but let's let's suppose that that h of t. It's this position function, and it gives uh, the height of a ball. Right, so some ball is thrown up in the air, and let's say that, that h of t gives the height of the ball. And let's say let's say in feet after t seconds. Uh, 
And, and one thing I want to want to mention is that well, h prime of t. This is the velocity of that ball. And so if I just draw some rough sketch of a, you know, some general picture here, let's say you know, the ball is thrown up in the air, its height increases and then it comes down and meets the ground. And let's say, let's say I've got, uh, I want to find an integral, a definite integral from a to b of h prime of t, the, this velocity function, dt. Well, we know that this will just boil down to uh, computing the antiderivative, in other words, h, evaluating at b, and subtracting what we get when we evaluate it at a. And so in this picture here, let's say I have uh, a is right here. And let's say b is out here. So here this is, uh, this is h of a, maybe let's say it's 50 feet. And then here this is, uh, this is h of b, maybe let's just say it's, it's uh, 20 feet, just for the sake of this example. Well, well then what's h of b minus h of a? Well this equals, uh, it equals 20 minus 50, or in other words, negative 30. So what does that negative 30 mean? Well, it means uh, it, it's really this distance here, right? It's telling us that we travel, you know, we started at a position of, of 50 feet in the air with this ball when we were first taking a look at it at, at t is equal to a. And in that window of time, uh, the ball ended at a height of 20 feet. There's, there's in other words, a, a displacement of minus 30 feet. At the end of the day, over this window of time, the ball descended 30 feet. Right, so it went up, it went down, descended 30 feet. So this is this, is this net difference, this net change. And so uh, this, this, this net change of this height function, this, this um, <coughs> yeah, this, this height function is, is just this displacement. Right, the distance of, uh, between where the ball started and where the ball ended. And so one thing I want to point out is that this, this is not the distance the ball traveled. So this is this is not the distance the ball traveled over this window of time, right? Because there was some time uh, it spent this ball traveled upwards, and some time this this ball traveled downwards, and and here we're just saying that it moved down thirty feet. Um, if all of the travel, if this ball moved in the same direction this, during this whole period of time, uh, then we could interpret it as distance. But here in this case, um, because that's because it didn't go in the same direction during this whole window, um, here we're calling it displacement. And so we'll talk about we'll talk about this a little bit more in a moment. But let me just illustrate uh, another another quick example. So let's let's suppose. Uh, v of t uh, is the volume of water in a reservoir after t hours. And so uh, the, the derivative of this function, v prime of t, well, this would just tell us uh, the rate of change. Uh, 
This is the rate of change of the volume. Right, and if I were to take an integral from a to b, t is equal to a to t is equal to b, of, of v prime of t, the rate of change or the volume of water in this reservoir, well, it would just boil down to evaluating the volume at a time of b, evaluating the volume at a time of a, and then taking this difference. It would be the, the, the change in the water from uh, uh, the, the change in the volume of water in the reservoir um, from from t is equal to a to t is equal to b, and and so you know just a quick picture here. Maybe this is an overly simplistic picture. Let's suppose I have you know some big container of water. I can imagine as a reservoir. And let's say you know v is equal to a is you know, this amount full, and let's say v is equal to, or t is equal to b, v of b, is when the container is, is this amount full. Right, from bottom to top. And, and you know, because this, the volume of the water is changing, you know, we can imagine that, that there is some sort of uh, flow inwards and some flow outwards. And, and we can really interpret uh, v of t, or v, v prime of t, that is, as the rate in minus the rate out, right? The change in the, uh, the volume, well, if there's some flowing in and some flowing out, uh, the overall change is just how much is coming in, take away how much is coming out. And, and really what we're computing here in this net change v of b minus v of a is really uh, this difference here. This difference here. Just the overall difference in volume uh, between time of a and time of b. Okay, so this is just to have a little bit of a picture in mind. Um, there are a handful of other examples and, and descriptions in, in the book that I would go take a look at. Um, but, but really this is just to have, all this is just to have a good interpretation of, of, of what an integral might mean um, if, if you're given uh, some very physical meaning uh, function. And so this is just something to, to give you an idea in the back of your mind when you're working with integrals uh, with a specific meaning. Okay, so let's go back to this idea of, of displacement uh, versus versus total distance. So, so you know, one example um, that I, I think sort of portrays this rather clearly is is that you know, let's say I were to to start at some point and I were to move forward. Uh, Five feet. If I were to walk five feet forward, and then afterwards uh, I would walk three feet back. Well, then I would just end up two feet ahead of where I started, right? And so this displacement, this idea of displacement. Uh, this would just tell me that I'm, I'm, I'm two feet uh, in front of, two feet forward from where I started. Right, it sort of forgets about this, this uh, walking forward and back. It just tells me where I ended up in relationship to where I started. And this total distance that I traveled, well, you tell me that it's eight feet. And if I walked five feet forward and three feet back, in total, I walked eight feet, right? This is, this is really the, the, the sum the 
this is uh, the sum of the distances traveled regardless of direction. And so, um, you know, what, what computation are we doing with, with this displacement? Well, we're taking uh, the direction move forward and we're subtracting away the direction move backwards. Kind of feels like what we do when we think about integrals. And with the total distance, we're, we're adding up, oops, we're adding up the distance forward, distance traveled forward, with the distance traveled backwards. Okay, and, and, and so this relates to maybe more explicitly velocity, since velocity is really just speed with direction. And so when we think about velocity, well, uh, the velocity being positive corresponds to moving forward. And velocity being negative corresponds to, to moving backwards. And so let's, let's do an even more explicit example. Let's say uh, we have a, a particle that's moving along a line and its velocity in meters per second is given by v of t is equal to t squared minus t minus 6. And so uh, maybe just to really paint the picture, uh, let's, let's graph this function. And, and we can graph it by recognizing that uh, this factors as t minus 3 times t plus 2. And so it's a parabola. There's a parabola here uh, with a 0 of t is equal to negative 2 and a 0 of t is equal to positive 3. And it's opening upwards. And so I'm just going to draw a rough sketch of the picture. We don't really need the, the full details here, but I just want to have some sense of what this parabola looks like. So there, there's a, there's a picture to have in mind. Okay, and so if I were to compute the integral from 1 to 4 of t squared minus t minus 6 dt, well, what would happen here in this, this computation? Well, we would find, uh, we would find this area from 1 to 3, and we would count it as negative. And, and then we would find this area from 3 to 4, and this area would be counted as positive. And, and in this integral computation, uh, it really is just taking, let's say this is a1, and this is a2, this integral is really just taking a1 and subtracting away a2. And so we, we've talked a little bit about the relationship between um, the area of uh, the area under the curve of a function and, and, and a velocity function. And, and here, this, this area here, it's telling us because at least uh, this area in blue, uh, because it's the area under the curve of a section of the graph that's entirely positive, this is really telling us the, the distance, the total distance traveled forward. Whereas A2, it's measuring the distance traveled backwards on this interval. 
And so uh, when we go ahead and compute this integral, so here we get uh, the, we take the antiderivative, we get t cubed over 3 minus t squared over 2 minus 6t, and we evaluate this from 1 to 4. And this gives us 64 over 3 minus 16 over 2 minus, minus 24. Take away uh, 1 third minus 1 half minus 6, and this gives us, at the very end, minus 9 halves. This quantity here, this minus 9 halves, is telling us the, the displacement of this particle. It says, okay, well, you know, this particle, it moved backwards, um, it moved backwards this chunk of distance given by A2, then it moved forward this chunk of distance given by A1, and, and that totals, at the end of the day, uh, minus 9.2, uh, telling us we move four and a half meters backwards. This particle moved four and a half meters backwards along this line. Okay, well, how do we find the total distance traveled? Well, we wouldn't, sub we wouldn't end up subtracting off A2. We'd want to add on that, that, that distance traveled backwards. To, to our total distance, and so here, the total distance, this is really A1 plus A2. Right, so, uh, you know, if we were to count A2 as negative area, one way you can interpret adding it, adding it on is to, to subtract, subtract off negative A2. Um, so that might sound a little confusing, but, but you'll see what I mean in a moment. Um, right, so, so if we were to, let me think about how to phrase this. Yeah, let's sketch a, let's sketch a picture here. So let's say, um, you know, we, we have the same graph we, we did before. But I don't want to count uh, area below the graph as negative. I want to count it as positive. So let me reflect it above the, the x-axis. And so here we have our parabola. But when it goes below the x-axis, um, I want to reflect it. I want to imagine it as positive here. And it will look like so actually, let me redraw that last portion. Right, so instead of thinking about area uh, being under the curve being, being, being negative, I, I can think about that area being above the x-axis and, and counting it as positive. And so here, uh, this measurement would be that same A2 but count it as positive. And then here, we would have a measurement of A1 that was already counted as positive before. And so, you know, what graph did we draw here? Actually, this is the graph of the absolute value of our velocity function. Now, this is This is actually the absolute value of v of t. Right, this graph is, is the graph of v of t, but where all of the negative values were actually changed to be positive so that when we find the area under the curve, we will count it as positive area. And so uh, if we want to figure out the total distance traveled from t is equal to one to four, we would take the definite integral from one to four of the absolute value of v of t, dt. And this absolute value is going to help us count the area of the curve as positive. And, and so, you know, how do we accomplish this? We'll just keep in mind that, that the absolute value of v of t, what does the absolute value do? Well, it tells us that 
when we get a positive value, the absolute value doesn't really care and it just leaves it alone. Right, so when v of t is positive, when it's greater than or equal to zero, uh, we just get back v of t. The absolute value doesn't do anything, but when v of t is less than zero, uh, in other words, it's some negative value, well, we just negate it to make it positive. All right, so this integral from one to four of the absolute value of v of t dt, it's the same as the integral of, well, normally v of t would be negative on this portion from one to three. And so the absolute value would, would negate that and give us, actually, let me, highlight that in pink to say that that's from the absolute value, would negate that and give us negative v of t dt. And then we would still have to add on the area under the curve from, from three to four, but that would just be counted as positive. That's normally just v of t dt. Okay, so let's let's compute this. Uh, what do we get? Well, we, we get the same antiderivatives that we did before. Uh, this is. I'm going to take that first negative sign out. It's a you know it's a coefficient. It's a constant multiple of the the integrand of that first integral. Um, so let me just factor it out, and we're left with the the uh, negative the integral from one to three of v of t. This is uh, t cubed over three. T cubed over three minus T squared over two minus six T when we're using the same function that we had above, right? Uh, the, the function was, the function was T squared minus T minus six. And so here we'll get T cubed over three minus T squared over two minus six T, the same antiderivative we computed earlier. And we're gonna evaluate this from one to three. And then we're going to add on the area we get, uh, the positive area. So the integral from 3 to 4 of v of t dt. And, and so that's, again, the same antiderivative t cubed over 3 minus t squared over 2 minus 6t evaluated from now 3 to 4. And so, you know, let's maybe not work this out completely, but but... Uh, at least let's do the next step at least. So here we've got, uh, we still got that negative sign. We evaluate this expression at three, evaluate it at one and take the difference. So here we get well, three cubed is 27 over three minus nine over two minus 18. And then we're gonna subtract away what we get when we evaluate it at one. So one third minus one half minus six. So that's that first integral from one to three. And then we're adding on the integral from one to four. So this is uh, well, 64 over three minus 16 over two minus 24. We're gonna subtract off what we get from evaluating at three, which is what we computed earlier, right? So 27 over three minus nine halves uh, minus 18. And so I've worked this out already. This this gives us this gives us negative, and then the negative portion of the graph is is negative twenty two over three. The positive portion of the graph gives us uh, seventeen over six, and so the negative negative of the area would add on area, giving us sixty one over six. So. Uh, this is telling us the total distance the, the particle traveled over this interval from one to four. And so we see that it's a little bit more than 10 meters. Okay, so that's all for this video. In the next video, we'll talk about uh, the, the first real and major technique used for solving or evaluating uh, integrals.